So did you correctly identify last week's curiosity as a pitcher plant? That was a bit of a difficult curiosity, wasn't it? Well, this week's talk is all about pitcher plants and other carnivorous plants. This is a chapter of Charles Darwin's work that isn't very well known even today. In 1875, he published a book called Insectivorous Plants. He'd studied these amazing plants for over 15 years and was absolutely fascinated by the concept that some plants can catch and kill insects and other small animals. At the time, people laughed at Darwin. People thought it was a ridiculous idea. There were sarcastic poems written about him and how you shouldn't step too close to a daisy and to other plants for fear of being eaten. But of course, Darwin was absolutely right. Many plants can attract, capture and kill insects and other small animals. The most famous of the world's carnivorous plants is this one here, the Venus's flytrap. Darwin described it as the most wonderful plant in the world. He noticed how its leaves snap shut when an insect goes inside and touches the trigger hairs on the interior of the trap surface. Darwin was really interested about why plants such as this would trap and kill insects. Before his work, it was thought that this might be for defense, that the plant might kill insects and other animals that might try and eat the plant. But Charles Darwin's work showed that the plants trap the insects not for defense, but to actually get nourishment. He realized that many of the plants that capture and kill insects grow in areas that are really low in nutrients. Darwin's research on carnivorous plants focused on a different group called the sundews, and I have two of them right here. Sundews come in all shapes and sizes. This one produces tiny little leaves, whereas this one is much bigger. If you look really closely, the leaves are covered in droplets of glue that are really, really sticky. Insects get attracted to the leaves, get caught by the droplets of glue and stuck fast like a flypaper. Other types of carnivorous plants catch prey by completely different methods. There are seven groups of pitcher plants that occur around the world, and these produce some of the largest and most colorful of all traps of carnivorous plants. This one is called a Saracenia, and it comes from North America. It produces large trumpet-like pitchers that are really colorful, and these colors attract prey just like the petals of a flower. When an insect is attracted, they slip down inside into the mouth of the pitcher and fall all the way down to the bottom, where they can't escape and eventually die. The plant releases digestive fluid that breaks down the body of that insect and then absorbs nutrients that it uses to grow. These pitcher plants come in all shapes and sizes. Among the Saracenia, some are really tall, such as this one here. Others produce much smaller squatter traps that small ground-dwelling prey can easily climb up into and fall inside. One of the groups of pitcher plants really stands out. This group is called Nepenthes. There's 180 species of them, and they occur mainly in Southeast Asia and they produce the biggest traps of all carnivorous plants. This is an example, and as you can see, the pitchers develop completely differently. They grow on the ends of these long leaves here. But the biggest species of these can produce traps over 30 centimeters tall, and animals as big as rats have been known to fall inside of them, drown, and be digested and eaten. Many of the Nepenthes produce incredibly intricate pitchers. Look at this one here. This one is called Nepenthes edwardsiana. It has these spectacular blades that cause insects to easily fall inside. But if you look very closely, there's a ring of inwards pointing spines that makes it almost impossible for prey to climb out and escape. Sadly, many of these Nepenthes and some of the other carnivorous plants are critically endangered in the wild. This one here is called Nepenthes clipiata and it's practically extinct in its natural habitat. There's a collection called Ark of Life, of which this particular plant is one of them, to make sure it survives, at least in captivity, to hopefully reintroduce it one day into the wild. While he was researching this book, Insectivorous Plants, Charles Darwin thought about all of these different groups of carnivorous plants and wondered why they had evolved to catch insects and other small animals. 
he realized that all of these different carnivorous plants grow in habitats that are very low in nutrients, where the soil is so poor that normal non-carnivorous plants really have a hard time in surviving and growing. He worked out that by catching insects, each of these different groups of carnivorous plants get a benefit of a non-carnivorous species. They can survive in the areas where regular plants can't grow, and therefore they've survived, adapted, and evolved. And today, we've got over 800 species known right the way around the world. This week's experiment is inspired by carnivorous pitcher plants. You can make your very own pitfall trap to see what invertebrates you can catch and see if you do better than these carnivorous plants.